In this episode of Sailing Dark Angel, we finally sail out of Lake Worth, Florida, headed down the coast on our first leg of our journey back to the Bahamas. Our first stop gets exciting when our windlass fails while anchoring in a very crowded Lake Sylvia. If you like our videos, please smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. It's free for you and really helps our channel. What are we doing today, Captain Dave? We have left the beach, the, the, the lake. We what, have, we, what have we left? We have left the lake. We are heading out of the cut right now onto the ocean, and we're gonna sail south to Fort Lauderdale, is the plan. And how long are we gonna be out here for? I don't know, 10, 12 hours? Yeah. Bye, everyone, we love you. Oh, oh, sh okay, I see it coming, see that? I'm hanging on. I hope your computer's hanging on. It's not up. Oh, that? Yeah. All right, let's go see what kind of damage has happened on the inside. And our little generator, we locked it so that it can't go that way. Locked it right around there. Dave did a cool thing. Oh. What happened? Well, the, the cup went over but it's only got a little bit of water in it. A little bit of water, but that's okay. No big, no big. But I wanna go down in the halls and see if anything fell because one of the things I was interested in is that, I know it's dark, I'm sorry guys, but I've got my, my bottles and stuff all right here and I haven't moved them, but they seem to be doing fine even with that big wake, so it's fine. Yeah, so we got 78 power, but that's gonna go up substantially, of course, when the sun hits the solar panels and the sun's not quite up yet. But the sun is coming up and we're going out on big rollers and we're coming still through the cut. And this is the first time actually filming going somewhere because guess what? We're actually going somewhere. So where did that big weight come from? Like, is that, that the- boat that went in. That blue one right there. That was crazy. It's got places to be. So we got 33 feet on the underneath us. And which we hugged the shore all the way down so that we're not in the Gulf Stream. Yeah, because we're the closest to the Gulf Stream here at um, West Palm Beach. Palm Beach and West Palm Beach was home for too long. Although we made some really great friendships. radar right now and then we transmit and once it paints the screen switch to coastal mode drink coffee when I'm watching radar. Everyone knows that. Of course we do, sir. <laughs> We're not very far offshore. No, about a half a mile. It's pretty steady out here. There's only been a couple of really fast boats that went by and had quite a substantial wake, so I just turn into them. Like I, I turn into them so that it doesn't hit us broadside and make the boat go like this and break it. So here we are. Fort Lauderdale, we've made it. Well, I should say we've almost made it. Always want to kind of play the, play the dice there. Anyway, so yeah, hardly any incidents, only one major incident, and that was because there was a deep sea fishing vessel that went by at top speed, right close to us, and the wake from that put the water right over the bow and up onto the coach roof, and actually, because I had um, the hatches open, of course it came into our our living space and I had to clean it all up from that. But it's such a good thing that I remembered to close the water catchment system before we left. So that was closed and we didn't you know, pollute our water system at all. We were hoping to get some sailing in today, but it's all been motoring because it's been eight, nine, 
knots on the bow. It's no good to sail. Wind matters. So what are we doing now, Captain Dave? We're waiting for a bridge. What? What's the name of the bridge? 17th Street Bridge. Here in Fort Lauderdale, we made it. Now we just gotta get to Lake Fort Sylvia. I think we're gonna make the bridge, we're too early for the bridge. Putting her in hover? Yeah, I've actually got it here a little bit now because we were drifting back. Where are we? There's a lot of traffic back there. We got about what 15 minutes to wait? So we gotta put her in hover? Yep. Put her in hover, Barf. Put her in hover. So of course we made it to Lake Sylvia, dropped the anchor, and as I was concerned about earlier for I don't know, some sixth sense of something about to fail, the windlass has failed. And I did a little research and I think it's the non-serviceable solenoids, which I've ripped apart and I'm trying to service. So I've cleaned these contacts as best I can. And I'm taking the inside ones out, cleaning those as well. I've got to do these bottom ones yet. And then I'm going to put it all back together and see how it goes. So these little springs go on top and these contacts fit up in here. And uh, the there's the throw for the solenoid. So we're gonna give this a try, but it doesn't smell good. And uh, when electronics smell burnt, they're generally burnt, but we're gonna give this a try and see if it works. I've cleaned the contacts and now I'm going to put it all back together. So okay. the contacts line up at the inside there. And with these springs, then I just need to wire brush these terminals and get them all cleaned up so that I can treat those and put them back together too. Well, I've serviced the relays. They're throwing just fine, but the windlass still isn't working. What are we doing today, Captain Dave? Today we're going to take the windlass apart and see what the damage is. Why are we taking the windlass apart? We came in yesterday from our first trip in like a long time and got in here and dropped the anchor in Lake Sylvia and uh, the windlass failed. So. Of course it did. I've rebuilt so. the solenoid pack and it seems to work okay. So next step is to look at the motor. And what are our obstacles or what are we dealing with out there? It's, it, I think it's pretty windy, right? Yeah, it's a little windy, but it's mostly we're in a bad spot and we're real close to another boat and to shore and so forth. So we really got to get this thing fixed. And it's really super noisy out here, as you can see, because they've got construction going on over there. And then we've got construction going on over here. So we're definitely in the right area. Yeah, it's a little windy. With all of this rust coming off like that, does that mean that the chain's bad? Well, it means the chain took a beating being stored for so long. What I'm doing is gonna, I'm going to try and get at the motor itself, the electric motor, and see if there's either a flat spot in the armature or maybe it's just a bad connection. Let's hope for the bad connection because if it's if it's the motor, that's a big expense and more waiting time. There we go. Yeah, the connections are all good. On. So you have your meter, what are you doing with that? I'm just going to measure the voltage on the, on the battery when you hit the switch, or on the motor when you hit the switch. Okay, so you want the switch ready? Okay, go ahead. Just hold it. Nothing here. Try the other switch. Ready? Yep. Why there's no power here? Yep. Okay. There's no power going to the motor. 
So are you going to have to talk a little louder because it's hard to hear out here in the wind. Right guys? There's no power going to the motor. So we've got to find out where the where the issue is with us not getting power. Wow. What? This is rubbed right flat. Okay. <laughs> but at least it's still insulated. Okay. They tuck it a little tight. So somewhere between here and the solenoid switches, we're not getting power. So does that mean you have to take all of this off and pull nope. it out? That means we gotta go and find out why there's no power coming up here. So there's no power coming out of the solenoid. We're back down below. <gasps> yeah, the 10 millimeter, the, nobody actually ever has one. I think they're mythical. But you have one in there. No, no. Is it no. fake? Is it like a unicorn? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's find out down below. There's no power coming to the motor. Okay. That's good news. So the power comes back here. Breakers on. So yesterday I rebuilt the uh, solenoid pack because that on the forums that's the big issue. Uh, I didn't haven't even reattached it to the wall yet. Here's the main breaker feeding power to it. And you can see the breakers on. If I press that button, it trips it. But the ground here, more or less. And there's 12 volts. So there's 12 volts coming into the breaker. 12 volts coming out of the breaker. So we've got 12 volts going in here. Nothing there. And nothing there. Now these two lines, this one and this one, are the ones that go up to the windlass. And what this does is this switches power from the main power feed coming out of the breaker, goes into here. So the power comes into here. When you press a button, a solenoid gets tripped and it closes the circuit and it sends power either to this wire up to where you saw it on the back of the windlass or this wire where you saw it on the back of the windlass. And it won't do anything until we press the button up top. So what we need to do is press the button and see if we've got power leaving the solenoid and going up. Yep. Try the other one? Ready? Yes. Okay. Okay. This is the bane of every electronics tech's existence is an intermittent problem. So this windlass has been mildly intermittent and I thought maybe it was the foot switches so I rebuilt the foot switches and it was fine for months. Then it started to act up again and I thought, well, I'll rebuild the foot switches. Didn't do anything. So then I rebuilt the solenoid pack last night after it all failed and it didn't fix anything. We were low power, but we're low power now. So then I went out and worked on the motor. I haven't changed anything, I haven't touched anything, but it's not working or it wasn't working. So we're gonna go up top and we're gonna measure the outputs on the motor again, because apparently this is working. Understand. And uh, if it's working, there's not much I can do with it. Maybe tapping on the motor, maybe there's a would flat spot in the armature. Would you believe that this doesn't make me any happier? Yeah, I would, because I can't fix it. Okay. And if we get moved around to the spot that you want over there, and it does the same damn thing, we get stuck in the same, same dicey situation. Yeah. position. Yeah. We're a little too close to this boat that's next to us, so we have to move anyway. Yes. But I mean... Let's go measure. It just suddenly decides to work out of nowhere. There you go. I'm working now. Don't bang on me anymore. Whatever. Stop. Again? Motor's fine. So, I don't know what the problem is. Now this is concerning. What is that? Here's my issue. Do you, can you wrap this, that? This housing yeah. gets down real tight onto this. Yeah. And 
and I think maybe we've shorted it out. Okay, so can you wrap that with something? Can you put tape around that yeah, so let's that it? Yeah, grab some electrical tape before we put it back. Oh, together. so that was an actual fix that I just talked about. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And what we're gonna do is, I'm not only gonna put some tape on. I'm gonna bend these down a little bit. Oh, uh, okay. Just force them down. I, not too much because I don't want to break the studs. Right. Yeah, I don't know if I've just already said this before, but I'm telling you now, I'm not all that happy with this thing right now because it just seems to be working and then not working. Now we're gonna move like over this direction where it's a little bit more clear. So what are you planning to do right now? Just gonna take each of these leads off and you see where it's chafed? Yeah. I'm gonna put new tape around each chafe. Okay. But to get the tape to go around properly, I'm gonna take these off. So I can actually wrap the tape without having to struggle. Okay. Are you only going to wrap the one or are you going to wrap no. all three? Uh, two of them are showing actual chafe, so I'm going to wrap those two. So you think that that's causing the short? It might. I don't know. It's certainly not helping. So in other words, it wouldn't hurt if it was put on there? Correct. The only problem is I don't have red tape. Okay. You should always cut through the red tape before you <laughs> So I've marked up the red lead black, but it's still, there's lots of obvious red on it. You got red on you. You got red on you. <laughs> I not only never find anything I set down, I hide my own Easter eggs. And with age, that only gets worse. Did you call me old? I didn't call you old. I said with age, that only... Did you not hear what I was saying? Do I need to speak up? Hey. <laughs> I thought this was going to be horrible to get off, but nope. You just got to beat it with a big enough hammer. A little mallet. Yeah, bring it back on. Wow. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Hey, I'm impressed. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. So it's not like it's going to be a big job to change the motor. It's just going to be expensive and time consuming to find one. Do you find that that's a big relief for you? That's good. I'm glad to hear that. Motor is the most expensive thing you can break on. Yeah, to be honest, guys, I was watching him stress out a little bit this morning. He was not having a good morning trying to face this down, get his mind wrapped around it. But now that we've done it, it's not as big a deal as we thought it was going to be. I'm going to flash up the engines. Okay. Is this thing still on? Yes, it is. It's moving. It's so moving and grooving. It to do. So it looks like Dave has actually fixed the windlass. Um, we're hoping that it's not just intermittent. We hope that it's fixed, fixed, and we have now moved and we're in a new spot. And now we can go to the Bahamas. Well, so Anthony's come to join us on the boat for the day. How y'all doing? <laughs> Our good buddy, Anthony. And we're just chilling. Chilling, drinking Rami, some chips, drinking some beer, drowning kids. It's all good fun. And the kids.